Sometimes a victim just decides they've had enough and it's time to fight back. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Johannesburg, South Africa. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of Newbold targets. Newbold targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Guy to the left inside the circle is our robber and guy to the right is his victim. He actually has a broken bottle that he's holding to the guy's neck and threatening him with. You'll barely get to see it a little bit later, but that's the weapon that he's using. So he's robbing this guy and shaking him down and our victim's like, hey man, whatever. I'm just gonna give you the stuff out of my pockets or whatever. So you can see the guy's left hand. You can't see it on screen because he's got it hold, hold to the guy's back and saying, hey, I'll cut you with this if you don't give me what's out of your pockets. Now, when he pulls his hand around, our victim decides that's a great time to punch him in the head and get after him. So he does that. And now this guy in the red shirt looks like security or something like that. He comes over to help as well. And now it's on. This dude lost his bottle. And now the game of kick the can begins, or I guess it's kick the arm robber and beat him up because it becomes an absolute family affair. We've got an entire thing here where these guys are just wailing a tune on this guy. Punches and kicks. You're gonna get to see his face here in a second when they get him that he's kind of out of it. And then they're gonna actually let the intended victim get a couple of good licks in as well for good measure. And that's where this one ends. I gotta admit, it was satisfying watching him haul off and punch that guy. You know, our national conference is coming up the last week of September outside of Manhattan, Kansas, all to benefit the Flint Hills Foster Teen Camp and helping abused and abandoned foster teens find a place in this world. It is happening. Hit the link in the description. Please come train with us. I promise you it is going to be a fantastic weekend of training. Let's think about lessons from this one. So first of all, I want to say, look at this. All these people just kind of walking by, not paying attention, whatever, is a pretty big deal. Don't expect anybody else to help you in your own work. You are your own agent in your own rescue. Don't expect anybody else to come and help you. Also during that, hey, sometimes the best answer is simply to comply. It's just to just let it go and go, hey man, I don't got any problems, whatever. You can have my stuff and then just give it to him. Now also you wanna use that as purposeful compliance to look for an opportunity to protect yourself and that's exactly what this guy did here. When he sees the bottle come off him, it's not a threat to him anymore or the guy's transitioning hands with it or something like that. He says, this is my opportunity. Now, if you're not paying attention and working for that purposeful compliance to look for your counter ambush opportunity, it will probably pass you by while it is in progress. So you do not want to mess with it from that perspective. You want to be ready in the moment and say, this is my go signal. And if to this guy, it was when he transitions that bottle, I'm going to punch him right in the face. And that's exactly what he does here. Now he gets a good hard lick on this guy. And listen, Having some good empty handed skills includes some standing punching skills. It does include this idea of being able to deliver a good solid punch. And that takes some work. Now we notice here this guy's technique maybe isn't the best. His elbow was way up high. He's maybe not in the best location or position, but we'll give him that because of the fact that, hey man, not everybody has that. But I strongly encourage you be able to deliver a good punch. Now that said, even delivering a really good punch may not take the guy out. Notice here that as we stop, this guy is, is fully able to continue to fight. So that first punch may not do it. You better have the empty handed skill set to continue this fight. So that guy's still got this little broken shard, a bottle or whatever in his hand and he's ready to fight about it. So you better be ready to have a fight at this kind of distance. And if you notice, this is a, a standing contact distance fight. So I hear all the time that, well, you know, you're only gonna really fight on the ground. Jiu Jitsu is the only way to go. And, and I'm a Jiu Jitsu guy, I like training in that stuff but you better have some standing striking skills as well. Now, dude jumps in from behind, looks like a security guard to me because he comes up out of the blue here. Okay, fine. But notice here that when he comes up from behind and gets a counter ambush, that he starts with the arm. And I think that's an incredibly important part of this here that he starts by dominating the arm with the tool in it. And we talk about that in the five Ds plus one, control the distance, then deflect, dominate, distract, disarm, disable. Because you see, as the guy pulls away here, that our good guy still has a hold of that arm. He has it dominated. And so our guy is not able to get his weapon back and get it into the fight as fast as he wants. So when we talk about this, that we deflect the tool away from us so that it doesn't hurt us in that moment. And then we dominate the hand with the tool, the arm with the tool, the person with the tool, and at least dominating that arm with the tool so it cannot go out and around and orbit back around to us 
is incredibly important. And now we're gonna start a beat down here, okay? So listen, at some point you gotta say, no, we're good people, we're not gonna go after this, we're not gonna do it this way. But I totally understand that this guy is a threat to the entire community and so the entire community decides that they're gonna give him a bit of an educational beat down. I don't want you to get in trouble with the law, so I'm not gonna recommend those things. But I also wanna say, a kick can be an absolute fight stopper. Look at the face of our bad guy here is that that kick to the solar plexus really took it out of him. And, and you know, generally speaking with our martial arts, I say that I use my feet to maneuver and my hands to defend myself. But a well-placed low kick to the legs, to the groin, and sometimes to the solar plexus like this on an opponent who's down can be absolutely devastating. And if ever you've done anything like Muay Thai or something like that, seeing somebody use their shins to disable somebody can be very, very impressive. And again, finally, you gotta know when enough is enough. They're really wailing a tune on this guy. You gotta just get him to the authorities and let the authorities take care of him. But I get it, people get angry in that moment and they want this stuff to not happen in their communities. And sometimes a little educational beatdown is what that takes. And so I get it. So let's pay attention here to know what when compliance is the right answer, to purposefully comply and look for an opportunity for a counter ambush. When it shows up, be definitive, have the empty handed skill set to handle your business. Don't expect anybody else to come to help you and know your five D's plus one as you seek to cover your ass.